Lloyds Banking Group have uh, uh, been praised today for scrapping the fees for unplanned overdrafts for their 20 million customers. Uh, it's not just Lloyds Bank, but Halifax and the Bank of Scotland, of course, included in that group. But as of November this year, any customers going over their overdraft limit will face no fees at all. Uh, the bank, though, will continue to block payments from the account until the overdraft is paid off. Now, this follows a lot of criticism of the high charges that are imposed by many banks. They say they're at a, a higher rate than, say, a loan from Wonga. Um, but aren't they perfectly reasonable within their rights to charge fees for people who are taking money that isn't theirs? Let's talk to Jasmine Bertels, who's a personal finance expert from Money Magpie, and joins us now. Uh, good morning to you, Jasmine. Hello there. Hello. Now, look, I mean, I, I've, I've certainly had more than my fair share of overdrafts in my time. I think most of my <laughs> 20s were, were spent in the red. Um, but things I've, I, it's one thing, isn't it, going overdrawn by a pound and then getting a sort of mm. a £30 fee for a letter saying you've got overdrawn by a pound. But modern day banking, I certainly, if, if I sort of accidentally, the big payment's gone out on a credit card and I hadn't really rearranged funds, and I'll get a, I'll get a text message from my bank saying, oh, mm. uh, you're, now, you're now a couple of hundred pounds overdrawn. Can you rearrange? funds uh, by the end of the day or face charges mm. so I can sort it out it seems to me that you know you you know if you're going to go overdrawn and certainly with a text message from the bank warning you look hey a big thumbs come out you maybe didn't realize can you sort out your funds there's not really any excuse for accidentally going overdrawn you are basically taking the bank's money without permission I'm not sure why they shouldn't be allowed to charge you well, I think, you, yes, you, you have a very good point. And in a lot of countries, uh, that you don't. You, if you don't have the money in your account, you can get to the cash point and that's it. You can't buy your groceries. So I think most of us would prefer to have a bit of latitude so that you can, as you say, you can go over a bit and you get told, oh, you know, put some more money in your account so that you don't get charged. Of course, there are, there are two types of overdrafts, as you know. There's, there's authorised overdrafts and then there's unauthorised. And Hey, you know, some, if you have one of those um, offset mortgage accounts, you can have a, effectively an authorised overdraft of tens of thousands of pounds. Um, but once you go over the authorised, that's when they start to slap on the charges because, you know, effectively they say, well, we, we let you go over by a thousand. That was pretty generous. All right, we were charging you interest on it. You've now gone over further than your thousand overdraft. So, yeah, we're going to charge you. And I think part of it really is because you know, much, many of us have free banking, which is very unusual in the world. We're one of the few countries that does that. Um, and effectively, those who go overdrawn and are you know, regularly bad with their money, whether it's their fault or not, are supplementing those of us who, who are mostly staying in credit. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, presumably, yeah, if if, uh, if they do get rid of these charges, what will happen? I think this is one of the warnings when this was suggested before, uh, that they should get rid of these big, big, big charges, that actually that would mean the people who were all you know, handling their money a bit better would all face charges for those current accounts. Although, to be fair, the banks are making money out of people's current accounts anyway because they effectively have that money without having to pay interest on it. Yes, very good point. And that's always the argument, that they, they have that money, they play with it on, on the international stock markets or whatever it is that they, they do. Who knows? They might put it on the you know, 3.30 at Chepso. I'm I, not I think that is what they do, I hate to tell you. Yes, quite, quite possibly. <laughs> but um, the, frankly, retail banking, you know, high street banking, is in no way, nowhere near as lucrative as international banking. And, you know, when we talk about the banks, we, we tend to think we're talking about high street banks, but of course you've got the international banks. That's where they make their real money, um, the stuff that we personally don't see. And you know, one of the reasons why we're seeing so many banks, so many banks um, folding now, particularly in, in rural areas, is that they're looking at their bottom line and thinking, we're not making enough money, we're not making enough of a profit. You could say that they're making quite enough profit. Their shareholders will disagree. So they are looking for ways to, to cut back. But they're not charities. I mean, they aren't charities. These are these no. are profit-making private companies. And we, we do tend to see having a bank account as sort of sort of our inalienable, mm. you know, human right. Yeah. Whereas actually, it, we, we, are, we are, they are providing a service to us and they need to make money out of us to make it worthwhile. Yes, absolutely. I mean, this is what I, you know, back, back in 2008, I was saying a, a lot on telly that, you know, we think of the banks as like the NHS. As you say, we think we have this inalienable right to have free banking because we've had it for a while and just think, oh, well, it's a service. You know, they, they work for us. We think of it as sort of government departments, but, but they're not. Unless you're, you're banking with a, a credit union and they are 
basically they're non for, not profit, non for profit banks. Um, you you are dealing with a business, as you say, and they need to make a profit. They need to act as a business and. Although I do think that, like the telecoms companies, they've, they've been far too interested in their shareholders and not in the least interested in their customers, um, there's a balance that has to be struck. So they, are, they do need to make a profit. They need to look at the bottom line. So in terms of looking at it from the customer's point of view, what, what is the best advice? I mean, I don't know where so I'm, I'm with a bank that does send these text messages out to say, mm. look, if there's a problem with your, your, your finances. Um, but there may be people who are able to sort of shift, you know, shift cash around from one mm. current account to another to do that. Absolutely. Hey, been there, done it. <laughs> I can, yeah. I can certainly remember that I've got one check left. I can't use my bank card because I know it's going to be taken from the machine in the wall. What do I do? You know, dilemma time. Yeah, I think yeah. most of us have been there in our lives. But, but this is the thing. Yeah. What, what is the best advice for somebody who, who is who's going overdrawn uh, or worries they're going to go overdrawn? They're not going to make the finances this, this month. What should they do? Mm. Well, I think, you know, first of all, talk to your bank. Say, look, this is the situation. I um, you, actually, if, you, if you've got a bank near you, not everybody does, um, at least phone them up and say, um, you know, as you know, I'm, I, I do try to manage it, but this has happened, that's happened. And for a lot of people, you know, things do happen. You know, with the best will in the world, you, you're doing your very best to, to keep uh, on the level. Some, some big thing hits you. And you phone them up and say, is, is there a way, can you possibly give me a bit more of an overdraft you know, until the end of the month? Um, if not, then um, I would go and speak to your local credit union. Now, credit unions are great because, as I say, they're not for profit. Um, they will help you budget, and they will also give small loans, um, the sort of loans that banks won't do, which stops yeah. you having to go to payday loans companies, which is really good. Yeah, um, also, yes, and, and try, try one of the debt agencies as well, like um, Systems Advice or Step Change or National Deadline. Again, they're really helpful to... to get you on, on the straight and narrow when it comes to budgeting. Yes, no, but that, I mean, that is the key thing, isn't it? You know, treat it as a one-off, oops, right, things have gone wrong, unless it's an obvious explanation for that, you know, you've, uh, you know, you've lost your job that, uh, that, that month, and so obviously there's less money coming in, then maybe that is something you need to go and talk to the CAB about. Jasmine Bertels, pleasure to speak to you, personal finance expert uh, from uh, Money and Magpie. Thank you very much indeed for joining us.